Hey guys, welcome back to the channel techbeast.org. In today's video, what we are going to discuss is all about OPC UA and especially OPC UA for IoT applications. Okay, so this session basically I have split into two uh, OPC UA part one, which is an overview. I'm going to explain all the theoretical portions. What are the concepts you want to understand if you are uh, planning to build an IoT solution? Okay, using OPC UA and part two, basically we will cover hands on as usual. So we are, we are going to set up an OPC UA server in Raspberry Pi and we are going to write a Python program um, uh, as, a, as a OPC UA client, uh, which uh, we will uh, use it to read the data from OPC UA server. Okay, so let's get into the topic directly. Uh, so before we talk about OPC UA, we need to understand the history. Okay, so where this OPC UA, how this uh, term uh, coin, where this term is like coined from. Okay, what is OPC? So basically in earlier OPC stands for object linking and embedding for process control. Okay, so as the word itself say process control. So OPC, uh, so all these industrial leaders like joined the uh, organization and form a, and created a foundation and uh, they were working to build a interoperable protocol in order to uh, connect, okay, uh, or in order to exchange uh, data, okay, securely and reliably between all the industrial automation systems, okay. And also there are so many vendors in the market. So basically this OPC ensures a seamless flow of data. Uh, between multiple uh, vendor systems. Okay, so that is the main objective of OPC and that's why the OPC is created for. So OPC is developed by OPC Foundation. So a lot of industrial leaders are all the parts of part of this OPC Foundation. Okay, uh, so I say it is an open protocol and there is no license fee required to use it. And if you are adopting it um, <clears throat> for your use case or building solution using OPC, uh, you don't need to pay any fees. Earlier this OPC uh, protocol or the standard I can say, okay, so it was primarily developed to use with Windows operating system. So only in Microsoft Windows based system, this OPC uh, was initially uh, being used. So there are so many uh, limitations. It since it is not a platform agnostic, it is not a operating system agnostic and it is less secured. Okay, so later these OPC foundation members, what they did, they did deep research and OPC UA evolved after that. Okay, so in order to bridge those gaps, especially from the security and the data modeling uh, perspective. So later the OPC, uh, the term, right? Now the abbreviation for OPC is basically open platform communication. Okay, so they changed it to open platform communication and UA stands for unified architecture. So basically it's a framework where you can bring in all your IoT devices from anywhere, whether it can be a shop floor or it can be uh, from any of your PLCs. Okay, so basically you bring all those devices into this uh, OPC UA uh, uh, architecture and you can able to read uh, the data, you can able to uh, make, uh, you can able to communicate uh, with uh, devices or you can able to establish machine to machine communication as per your uh, convenience. So it's it's so easy and the, the integrating the devices with OPC UA has become like seamless, uh, uh, seamless integration. That is one of the use case of uh, OPC UA. Okay. So this is also an open communication protocol, which is platform independent as I said. So basically OPC UA can run in any platform. It can run Windows, Linux, okay, any flavors of Linux like Ubuntu, Okay, you can basically run it in a, run it in any platform. So then, um, OPC UA is also a client server model. Basically, so we, we have discussed a lot about client server in our previous videos. So I, I hope you guys are like well aware of what is a client server model. Basically, the client will send a request to the server, and um, uh, the the server will respond to the client with the requested information. Okay. So uh, OPC UA is more secure than the OPC standard, as I said. So certificates, encryptions, the, the data exchange between the client and server is uh, encrypted. So there are so many uh, things uh, OPC UA um, has. So these are all the advanced features, okay, which differentiate OPC uh, from, uh, which differentiate OPC UA from OPC, okay. Then, uh, op then uh, this is something very important. So basically OPC UA provides advanced data modeling. Okay, so whether your data, uh, it's it's a data point, for example, it's a temperature reading or pressure reading. Okay, or you want to classify your <coughs> data as a, uh, as an events or as an alerts, okay, or historical data. So all these complex, uh, like a complex data modeling, right, you can uh, perform basically uh, in, op in OPC UA, okay. 
so from network perspective so for all for all iot use cases right so the the the, the network uh, components are like very important like how the network architecture so how you're going to connect your devices what protocol you're going to use so when it comes to opc ua right you really no need to worry much basically op opc ua uh, it supports wide range of networks okay basically like normal ethernet wifi internet you can you can use any of these uh, networks basically in order to uh, run a opc ua server and a client okay so last uh, these are all the use cases basically opc ua is widely used in manufacturing uh, energy and healthcare so of course it's not limited to these three but these three domains are the major players uh, adopting uh, opc ua okay okay so now let's uh, deep dive a little bit into the technical components okay so basically as i told it's a client server model so first opc ua server let's see in detail okay so basically uh, opc ua server these are all the components you can see here opc ua server application real objects which can be oplc sensors okay it can be anything then opc ua address space this is something very important we need to uh, we need to know if you want to understand uh, uh, opc ua uh uh very clearly okay so then uh, these are all the nodes uh, then monitored items subscriptions opc ua server apis communication stacks and these are all the to and from clients okay so let's just uh, go through one by one so what is this opc ua server application first of all the server application um is basically it contains all the functionalities of the server okay basically so real objects as i said it can be your plc sensors or any of your devices then opc ua address space okay so basically address space is something which uh, is used to represent the objects okay to the clients uh, it contains nodes as you can see here there are so many nodes address space contains uh, nodes uh, basically it contains the uh, definitions and the references to each other you can see all those nodes are linked okay so then address space also contains variables and methods basically so variables can be your uh, temperature data a uh, pressure data or whatever okay that the, the the data which which changes then uh, the methods can be anything with like events or alerts or any of your threshold you said so basically address space contains these two things methods and variables also then you can see here the view so the view is uh, basically a subset of address space okay so this uh, restrict the nodes that the server makes visible to the client okay for example let's say the client a wants to see the uh or or need to access the node in order to uh, get the data okay so this uh, client basically you are by by uh, creating a view what you are doing you are basically giving this five nodes or you are making this five nodes accessible to this client okay and all these nodes are not accessible okay so that's very important when it comes to uh, opc ua this is one of the um, uh, uh, unique features of uh, opc ua for security also so that's that's what that's a, that's what the purpose of uh, views are okay then here you can see the monitored item basically monitored item monitor the nodes okay so basically all the real world counterparts as i said uh, so that's that's what a monitored item basically will do then uh, here uh, so basically these two things right i what i have done is uh, i have highlighted this blue and orange so basically this opc ua server api right uh, uh, basically it separates and or it isolates the server application and the communication stack okay so i will just explain it to you why this uh, isolation is uh, very important so then here the subscription as i said right the subscription basically um, uh it's an endpoint uh, we can say it's an endpoint in the server basically that publishes the notifications or any data changes right to the client so then uh the client basically there is uh, that the client is the one which controls the rate of publishing let's say every 5 seconds you are reading some data so you are, the the data will be uh, published to the client every 5 seconds okay so the the client is the one basically which client controls the rate of publishing okay so basically these are all the main components in server application okay so now let's uh, come to this uh, the portion as i said so basically why we are isolating here server api okay here you can see opc ua server api basically this server api is the one which isolates the server application and the opc ua communication stack so why we are isolating first of all so that's uh the main reason is uh, as a developer or whoever 
who, 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 are, who are creating the solutions, okay, using OPC US server. So you can just focus on your business uh, logic or you can just write code that is specific to your application. Then you no need to worry much about the details of the network communication, okay. If you are focusing on server application, just create an object, what's your variable, what are the properties, just focus on that, define it and create it. So this is the main uh, reason this OPC US communication stack and the server application is uh, separate, okay or isolate. So this is just for our reference. So in my previous video, I have explained a lot about backnets and backnet objects. So this is just in order to correlate uh, backnet on OPC UA. So here each node basically defines uh, a, a, a real world objects information as I said. So each node is basically called as an objects here. Okay, so these are all the objects in a OPC UA server. Okay, so that's why I just mentioned it here then this is very important. So basically the OPC UA server API, right? This uh, are the main functionalities. Okay, OPC UA server API of course do uh, more than this, but these, four, these uh, four are the main functionalities which the OPC UA server API uh, basically handles. So data modeling functions, uh, communication services, security services, even handling. Okay, all these things basically uh, the OPC UA server API uh, manages, okay? So here, uh, the flow is basically, it's very straightforward. When a client send a request message, uh, the client or the OPC UA communication via the communication stack, the data will be passed to the corresponding node or I can say object. So the corresponding variable will be inside that node. The proper, uh, those informations we will send along with the client request and accordingly the response message will come. Okay, so that's how this flow works, request and response. So that's the OPC UA server, okay. So let's go to OPC UA client. Okay, so the client is very simple. So as I said, so the concept is similar. So OPC UA client API basically separates the client application and the OPC UA communication stack. Of course, the, the reason is developers, you can focus on what you want or your business needs. Okay, no need to worry much about the communication stacks or what you want to do in your uh, development side. Okay, so that's the main reason these uh, two things are isolated. So Client is uh, pretty straightforward. So client application basically uh, handles all the functionalities of the client, okay? The client API, right, it is similar to the server, okay, that has all the functionalities to interact with, okay? Then the communication stack basically converts all the client API calls into messages, okay, and send to server, okay? So let's say message is coming from here, OPC communication stack, it will convert it into message, uh, which can be understood by the server. Then server will respond the information accordingly, okay? So, so we can also um, request to send publishing request. So when you send a publish request and the notification, uh, no notifications will be sent back to the uh, client, okay, from the server. So it's it's a simple client server model uh, deployed in a, in a, in a, in a proper, uh, framework. Okay, so that's what this OPC UA is all about. So now uh, this is this is what uh, from technical perspective we all need to know. Like basically to start uh, or to, to to just get our hands dirty, we just need to understand how this OPC UA server and client is uh, functioning. Okay, so now uh, in my next video, right, what we are gonna see is all about uh, hands-on. Okay, so we are going to run a OPC UA server. Okay in a Raspberry Pi, which will have uh, like two data points, which is like a temperature and pressure. Then from the client, it can be your Mac or Windows, like whatever, you can just use your uh, PC to run a client program, which will get the data from the OPC UA server. Okay, so we are going to use uh, a Python module called async UA. Okay, so this is a latest module. Um, uh, it's an open source module also, Python module. We use Async UA Python server module to simulate the OPC UA server and our Raspberry Pi and we use Async UA Python client, okay, to read it. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Let's make technology easy PC for everyone as I always say and I will see you in my next video.